Welcome to Fed Scoop TV. I'm Camille Tudy, and I'm sitting here with John Dobriansky, who's the executive advisor at the FAA. Welcome. Thank you. We're going to talk a little bit about unmanned aircraft systems. Mm -hmm. What are they, and why do they matter? Okay, unmanned aircraft systems are essentially um, aircraft systems that are piloted from the ground. Um, you know, the, and they are very uh, well automated. Uh, a lot of the larger ones, you know, use global positioning satellite technology uh, for, you know, for uh, maneuvering through uh, specific airspaces. And so the, the real big difference with unmanned aircraft system versus manned uh, flight systems, like a, a, an air Airbus 319 or a Boeing uh, 757 is the the pilots are on the ground or, or in some cases you know the, uh, the the pilots may be mobile uh, but they are not actually in the aircraft itself. Mm -hmm. what, what are some of the best practices um, you can share with the UAS integration? Okay, um, we. Uh, under a congressional mandate, um, we are uh, tasked with coming up with a plan to integrate um, unmanned aircraft systems into the domestic airspace, uh, and which you know the FAA we, we manage 29,000 uh, flights per day in the five million square miles of d domestic airspace, and it's 24 square millions in miles in the oceanic. Um, airspace and um, uh, the UAS were have been initially designed uh, for specific missions like for instance um, in the case of you know Department of Defense uh, uh, unmanned aircraft systems where you have you know larger ones like Global Hawks and Predators they're used for reconnaissance in strategic theaters of operation um, and then you have a number of civilian agency uses uh, for instance since UASs are used for to assist firefighters, um, there was an example last year in the San Bernardino National Forest in outside of, of Los Angeles, where the where uh, the because of the high temperatures and the high winds, um, the, the firefighting teams were you know having trouble because of the fires were literally leaping over them. Uh, and so the UAS was brought in to do reconnaissance, essentially you know, aerial photography, which then was communicated to the uh, to, to the uh, a firefighting uh, control center that they could direct the firefighters to pinpoint those targets where they needed to, you know, apply uh, chemicals and in order to uh, put a, first maintain and control the fires and then actually put them out. And then you have uh, commercial uses of, of UAS. Um, uh, one of the benefits of a UAS is, is uh, the um, there are hazardous environmental situations, like say in in, in the Arctic, where you know e even with today's technology, um, you know having um, human pilots fly in and out to do um, remote sensing or you know reconnaissance of um, you know of oil facilities or you know um, tracking mi whale migrations and so particularly during the winter months can be a very hazardous um, exercise for 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 manned uh, um, aircraft systems so the UAS take that the unmanned aircraft systems take that out because they can be remotely guided maneuvered and piloted and then uh, you know put uh, and then uh, feed the uh, data back to to a, a team that is in a more safer remote location and when you take your own agency, what type of approach has it taken to this kind of integration? Um, we, uh, an e evolutionary approach. Um, the w what we're doing, and there's rulemaking that's in in process. Um, we're taking a look. The first step is to um, set specific, you know, rules and operational parameters for uh, for, for smaller UA uh, unmanned aircraft systems. Uh, and this is those 
those that are 55 pounds and under. So there will be a number of areas, you know, uh, capabilities, performance characteristics uh, that will be required, um, the ability to uh, for sense and avoid, meaning the ability to sense and avoid um, other aircraft in uh, that are you know flying in in that airspace and then you know uh, certification requirements a the one to make sure the pilots on ground are appropriately trained in order to you know skillfully and adeptly and safely fly the uh, the uh, uh, the UAS and a lot of the intended commercial uses for the 50 Five pound and under um, will, you know, in some of the in targeted uses will be for um, in intensive agriculture, for instance. And so initially these will be in the less uh, high traffic, um, you know, high uh, in the lower traffic um, aircraft uh, areas. So once we have a successfully, in, once successful integration of smaller unmanned aircraft systems has taken place. In the meantime, we'll move forward with potential integration of the larger ones. Um, you know, the more well-known ones are like, for instance, the Global Hawks or the uh, the Predators that, you know, um, Department of Homeland Security uses, uh, you know, for for uh, border uh, uh, surveillance. And, and those may end up flying in more high traffic uh, airspace, uh, but they they have very uh, strong performance characteristics, you know, uh, some different than uh, manned aircraft like a, um, you know, say a 757 or a Boeing 757 or a Boeing 767, uh, but a, a, some, a, a UAS like a Global Hawk is, has about the size and in some cases similar performance like a Boeing 737. So the, we're taking an evolutionary approach. Um, you know, get the, take the smaller ones that have the immediate commercial and um, and uh, public um, applications. Uh, you know, for 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 firefighting and others. And then at, you know, once once we have a, a successful uh, integration with that, to then s successfully integrate the uh, larger UAS into more high traffic air space. Mm -hmm. What do you see in terms of an, uh, an economic boom in this area over the next few years? Um, tremendous, tremendous. Um, the, the, the amount of UAS that are uh, predicted for commercial applications and, uh, and, and again, um, you know, uh, intensive agriculture, um, remote sensing, uh, oil and gas um, the, is the uh, there is projected to be an increase of the number of UASs uh, in the next three years to probably um, most likely about you know seven thousand seven to ten thousand, and uh, in terms of economic benefit, and it's uh, it's in, in the the benefit will essentially be uh, for all fifty states and territories. Uh, it's a potential for eighty-five billion dollars over the next five years in economic benefit for the U.S. Uh, some potential two hundred and fifty thousand, you know, new high-paying uh, um, uh, U.S. jobs uh, related to uh, resulting and relating from the the uh, growth in in U.S. in in that industry. Mm -hmm. John, thank you so much for t uh, chatting with FedScoop TV. We appreciate it. Thank you. I, uh, this is I uh, have enjoyed this this session, and I um, hope to uh, you know raise the uh, awareness of the uh, potential, um, the positive potential for uh, UAS and uh, uh, commercially and for um, you know positive uh, civilian purposes in, in this country. Thank you. I'm Camille Tudy for FedScoop TV. Thank you for watching.